All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to live at the podium. Uh, at the risk of getting in trouble with Mike and Mike in the morning, I will say that we are back better than ever. So with us today is John Tidwell, defensive back for Frankfurt University. And we're here to discuss a few things in his career and that big game looming this weekend at 1900 Central European Time. John, how you doing today, man? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing really good. Man, that's good to hear. All right, so let's get into this pretty quickly. Your career, you play college ball at Sioux Falls. Man, tell us about playing at Sioux Falls. Oh, yeah. I played at the University of Sioux Falls, um, where I went there about four and a half years. Um, I got a degree, a double major in accounting and business administration, and I minored in finance. And on the football um, side of things, I mean, it was just an unbelievable program. You know, um, that program knows how to win, and being up there really um, formed me into who I am as a football player and as a man, you know, um, and the guys that I've met up there, unbelievable, still best friends till this day. Um, I missed a couple of their weddings, unfortunately, being out here in Europe, but hey, they understand and they know what I'm doing. So it's all good, but yeah. Yeah, it's good, it's good when you got guys that, that understand the culture you're in and if something like that happens, they get it. And you, hey, they'll, they'll make you make it up later on. So. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> they were. University two falls that NAIA or Division two? That is uh, Division two. So when I first got there, though, they were um, transitioning from NAIA to Division two. So that was I was there the first year they were in transition period. So I got to see a little bit of the NAIA period, but then I got the whole aspect of the Division two. So basically, that entire region because I know Minot State made that same tr transition at the same time. So basically, was it three or four schools in that region all made the transition at the same time? Yeah, there were about three or four that did, yes. All right. Well, I definitely made the NCAA Division II uh, competition level a lot bigger because I know my time in it being in the uh, both the GSC and the SAC, mm -hmm. it was big up there, but now you're getting those Midwestern teams performing even more than it was before. Yeah, yeah. And that the NSIC, the conference we were in, I mean, it was unbelievable competition. I think the NSIC and the MIAA were the two toughest – Conferences, I believe, in um, Division Two, um, mm -hmm. because you had um, winners each year from those two conferences. So, see, I played the GSC as it was was created before it what it is now. You still okay. had all the Arkansas schools: uh, Harding, uh, Henderson State, Southern yeah. Arkansas, uh, but you still had Delta State, North Al, uh, mm -hmm. Valdosta, and that was when like Pierce, not Pierce, but, uh, Preston Parker, all those guys were transferring from Florida State to play for uh, yeah. Bowden and North Al. So it was, I know, I know how it was, how the competition can be at that time, at that level. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, but from Sioux Falls, you had a pretty interesting next step. Ex explain how you were able to make from Sioux Falls to the NFL level. All right. Well, I mean, it all started, you know, being able to perform um, at the Division II level. Um, at a high level. So, I mean, there was another buddy of mine. His name is Solomon St. Pierre. Um, he was the other corner uh, while I was there. And I think that we raised a lot of noise in Division Two, just being two shutdown corners. And that got a lot of attention from NFL scouts. Um, so about our junior years when we had the, the, our best year um, as a defense as well, and the scouts had contacted me and Solomon and they were like, hey, you know, we really like what you did this year. This and that. He was like, as long as you perform next year, uh, don't worry, you'll be getting a call from us. So um, going into our senior year, you know, we were excited about that. So we performed our senior year, and we got asked to come to a pro day, which was up at um, SDSU mm -hmm. up in South Dakota, where we got to perform the 40-yard dash, the pro agility, the vertical, um, all the tests, you know, just like the combine that you see on TV. We got to perform in that. And I did really well in that um, combine. And I was actually asked right after that to come down to the Denver Broncos pro day that they had, which was a local pro day. And being that I'm from Denver, they were able to get me in there um, as soon as possible because they didn't have like there's such certain rules where you can't have so many guys come in unless they're in a certain region um, mm -hmm. of your facilities and whatnot. So I lived within that region. Mm -hmm. So they asked me to come to that um, pro day. So I got to attend that as well. And I performed really well there. Um, the defensive back coach was there. The receiver coach, all of them were there. And they watched me perform. And I impressed them enough to 
um, actually get a call from them right after the draft. It was like five minutes after. And they called me and said, hey, we want to sign you. Um, uh, what do you think? And I was like, well, why not be able to go home, play in front of my hometown? Mm-hmm. So um, I signed with them. And then that's how I got basically into that process. So you're making that tra- – obviously making the transition from NCAA Division Two to NFL level. What was the most defining – thing that you noticed that was different between the two levels? I would probably say the speed of everyone, like how fast the dudes actually were, because I believe that I was a pretty fast dude for Division Two, but mm-hmm. then seeing those Division One dudes run, I was like, mm-hmm. holy, oof, okay. So that's the only thing that I think stood out the most. And of course, the speed of the game, but that's from any level. If you go from D1 to NFL, the speed is going to change. So, but I think the speed of the receivers and even other positions was the biggest um, difference that I had to get used to right away. A couple of guys I know that I've talked to actually almost felt relieved as they were done with the college game, getting into the NFL game, where it became just football. And you didn't have so much of the outside stuff to go along with it. Can you Can you say the same, that it almost felt like, a little bit less of a burden just focusing on football and just spending the time, even though you became a professional and you had a lot more on your plate with that. Yeah, I mean, I agree to a certain extent. Um, yeah, you didn't have the pressures of schoolwork. Um, maybe you had to have a job or something on the side in the summer and whatnot. Um, you did really get to focus on just football and learning the playbook and you were, that was your life at that point, you know, just football. But you also had to deal with, like, media stuff, which you didn't really have to deal with, at least at my Division two level. You didn't have to really deal with the media side of things, the fan part of things, cause, and going out and just talking to, like, fans or different people. Like, you didn't have to do that at Division two level. So that was a little different for me as well. But, I mean, being able to just focus on football was a huge relief. Because school work was done, didn't have to worry about that. So that was just less stress on your back, of course. Um, now, what was the culture like of the, and being in that kind of locker room? Because obviously, you got it's, it's a very transient type of business. You've got a lot of guys coming in, a lot of guys going out. So, what <clears throat> was there any certain level of stress or certain level of of camaraderie that was able to be developed because of that issue, or how did that feel to you? Um, I mean, each and every day, you know, when you walked in there, you didn't know if that was your last day or not. So that was a huge, huge stress. Um, the playbook was a lot more difficult. So that was another burden that you had to overcome. Um, I think that if you weren't fully, um, into learning the playbook and this and that, the coaches could tell. So they would have, they would, I mean, come up straight to you and ask you like, Hey, I mean, are you actually looking at the playbook, this and that? So, I mean, the biggest stress was not knowing if it was your last day or not. Mm-hmm. So that was the hardest thing. Like you were walking on eggshells almost. All right. I'm about to, I'm, I'm warning you. I'm about to bring up probably a sad day to you. What oh, was okay. it like to know? What, what, what was that phone call or that office visit like when they told you that it, it's not working out just yet for you? Yeah. Uh, it was – so after the last preseason game, uh, coach told us like, Hey, you guys will receive a call, um, in the morning. So like have, have all your stuff packed just in case, you know, he said that to everyone right after the game. Um, so like I received the call and they're like, Hey, we need you to come down to the um, facilities. Unfortunately, we got to let you go. But, um, but they actually, they, it was really, it wasn't too bad. You know, like you got to go talk to the head coach, um, coach Kubiak at the time. And then you got to go talk to um, the GM, which was John Elway. And they actually sat down with you and told you, like, exactly why, like, you didn't make it and, like, what they think um, your next step should be or what you should do or should not do um, regarding football and whatnot. So, I mean, it wasn't – I mean, I didn't take it too much to heart. Of course, it sucks. Like, yeah, it hurt. But I got to learn something from it because they told me, like, what I should do and what – um, if I should continue or not. So it wasn't it wasn't that bad. Okay. I mean, I, some guys might have taken it a little different, but. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably You're probably hiding a little bit, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
what what it was your number one takeaway from that NFL experience? What what has built what it has grown within you the most being since you got had the chance to take part in that? Um, I would probably say from a whole like as a whole football standpoint is probably to enjoy the game um, while you have it because it can be over like that could have like if I would have been cut there that could have been my last time ever playing football you know um, mm-hmm. luckily enough I got to come out here and um, experience something else but I just right now, I've been taking like every time I step on the field I've been taking it in a lot more because I know with old age injuries any of that stuff can happen so that's the biggest thing overall but like getting down to detail, it'd probably be to work on like my technique and really focus in on that stuff. Cause that was the biggest takeaway that I got from the coaches. Um, overall, my DB coach, head coach and everything was technique can take you a long way. And I've been trusted through that, like through my college career and everything, but mm-hmm. hearing from them as well, I mean, was huge. Yeah. It's when, when you get to a level like that, the little nuances in your technique that you never even thought of, you never knew existed. Yeah, become so so apparent. Oh yeah, so it's, and it's good that you got that chance to really see that, and it comes to the forefront of your attention. Mm-hmm. But off of what you said, perfect transition. One door closed, now the next door is open. What was what was the process of becoming an athlete for the Frankfurt Universe coming off that NFL experience? Um, I mean, I've had an awesome experience um, here. The transition was great. Um, so I was, I contacted Coach K. Um, he's our defense coordinator, and asked him like, "Hey, do you guys need anybody?" Because the the main reason was because my grandparents they actually live only ten minutes away from Frankfurt. Mm-hmm. Um, because I I am half German, so they're mm-hmm. they're out here. I have an aunt out here as well, and then some other other family um, as well. So I just wanted you know to be able to have them watch me play at least once um, live. So that was the biggest thing. So I contacted Coach K, and he was like. I don't know if we really need you, this and that. I was like, all right, well, here's my profile for, like, Euro players or whatever. So then he contacted me back, like, ah, we'll see what we can do then. So then he uh, talked to the head coach, and they got me out here. Um, so I'm thankful for that. i glad they made that decision, and I'm appreciative of it. So, but playing out here, I mean, it's I love it. Like, it's so fun. The guys on the team are all welcoming, um, the Germans, and also the other Americans. Some have been out here um, before. But I mean, I've loved it so far. So, what is what has been your defining moment so far in this early season? Um, my defining moment. Let's see. What do you mean by that? All right. Well, <clears throat> it probably wasn't the greatest question, but uh, <laughs> just that this early season. Uh, obviously, you're getting ready for the big, the big six Euro Bowl, but mm-hmm. you've played some other big games so far. We had the, the GFL season that started and gotten going. You've also had the, the close game with Berlin Adler to get qualified for the Big Six. So what of that, what of those moments has prepared you most going into this Big Six Euro Bowl? Um, I'd probably say um, that Berlin game was probably a big one for me, just because I seen how like I don't like how Europeans kind of go about playing the game of football and how they take mm-hmm. a loss differently. Like it's not too much different. But um, it's just the philosophy of how things were ran. I understand how, like, they do a point system here and whatnot. So it's a little different. Um, mm-hmm. But that, just seeing that, I was like, okay, so this is something, I don't know, as a leadership role maybe that I could help out in, at least defensively for sure, mm-hmm. being able to just get those guys going no matter what. Um, just don't worry about, like, what the score looks like or anything else, just going out there and playing and having fun and trying to win at the same time. Mm-hmm. Now getting into the big six year bowl, you're playing five time GFL champions, New Yorker Lions. Uh, what has seen to be the, the biggest key for your defense and preparing for that New Yorker offense? I would say it's all about, for us at least, it's all about execution and um, playing our responsibilities to um, top-notch level because as an offense, they do a great job of executing. Um, they make very few mistakes. They Their quarterback runs their offense very, very well, and they have four four great receivers that I've seen. 
um, on film so far. So, I mean, if we just go out and execute to our high standard, how we're supposed to, then I think we'd have a, we're going to have a really good game. Mm-hmm. Is the, the level of, of the perception of their success over the last few years, does that give your program, some, some of the other guys on your team, a little issue knowing that they're playing such a well-thought-of program? Or is that not a non-factor in the locker room? Um, well, I can see some some guys, they talk about it so much like, oh, man, they're the best in Europe. They're the best in Europe. So it does um, mm-hmm. just a little bit. But I, I know a lot of us on the team are like, hey, I mean, they're just another football team. They put on their pants the same way we do. So mm-hmm. why not just go out here and play the best of our ability and we can see what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the expectation of this game? How do you think it's going to come out to the end? You know, I mean, I think it's going to be a really, really good game, and it's going to come down to the wire. But, of course, I think – I mean, I think we can take this one. Give me a number. Give me a number. What's the final oh. score? Give me a final score. Yeah, I have no numbers. I have uh, no numbers. I'm a defensive guy, so, I mean, it's going to be a low score. I'll tell you what. I try, to, I try to go to it. Good job. You held out. You held strong. <laughs> try to pull my best Dan, Dan Levitard on you. You didn't fall for it. So, uh. Now let's get, let's get away from the game a little bit. A big six year bowl is going to be huge. It's going to give fans out a little bit. It's going to be nineteen hundred uh, Central European time live feed. Will that be available? Yeah, there should be um, a feed somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. Okay, uh, to fans out there, John will get me the live feed. That, sure that's, that's your job, John. Get your get, yeah, give me a live feed. I will have it on my Instagram page in my description. I'll have it on my Facebook page. Uh, and I want to talk to the higher ups and the, the the guys up in the clouds at podium. See if we can get that posted on our page. So we'll get the shit out there for all y'all. Uh, get that ready for John's family. Uh, obviously, most of them will be at the game, though, right? They sure will. So, so but let's get let's get away from football a little bit. Uh, like you said before, you've got family actually there in Germany. What has that experience been been like for you to travel this area a little bit, but I actually have family with you to experience it with? Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable. Like, it's a blessing. Um, my sister, she was actually out here just a week ago, um, this last week. Um, and we actually got to go see our grandparents together for the first time in, like, 15 years. We haven't seen them. Um, and then we got to go see my mom's um, aunt and cousins. So that was also just unbelievable because we just get to hang out with family and, you know, learn a little bit about our European history because um, we don't know too much about it. Because you know we're never around it, so being able to have that stuff, I mean, it's awesome. I love it. Yeah, you're actually you're one of the luckier ones, just because you get a little. It's a little easier for you to get enveloped into the culture of where you're at. Yeah, uh, I know for me in Poland, it took a little bit. It took it took me getting to Jeshu with those guys there to really find people that could just envelop and help bring the culture out, and for me experience, to experience it. Whereas you have family, so you already have that instant connection, and they can bring you along in that culture a little easier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any good travel stories just yet? Um, I don't know. All our bus rides are pretty fun. Um, but uh, being able to, my biggest thing is like eating my um Oma and Opa's food. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, weekly I can go over there whenever they, whenever I want, and just eat their food. She makes some good food. That's for dang sure. Tell you what, yeah, there's nothing better than grandma's food. I don't, oh, care. Yeah. I don't care where you are, where you live, you could be from Mars, whatever. Grandma's food's always the best. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a shout out to my grandma's biscuits and gravy and chicken and dumplings. <laughs> nothing better, nothing better. Oh, yeah. I agree. Um, any, any plans for big travel? Uh, whether it's during the season, obviously, you, the GFL season is pretty rigorous. Uh, pretty similar to the NFL type schedule, just the, yeah. the amount of games. Um, but is there any plans maybe to travel to Europe, go see another country, go see uh, anything that's been big on your, on your mind for a while? Yeah. Um, I really want to try and get out. Hopefully I can get it to work to go out to Sweden. Um, I have a buddy playing out there um, for the Arebro Knights. I'm not sure mm-hmm. if I said it right. But he's a quarterback for them. Um, I want to try and go out there and watch him play and just travel a little bit around there. And then um, if I have enough time, I don't know um, if I will, but trying to get down to Italy possibly. 
And then, um, of course, I want to see a concentration camp while I'm here just to see it. Um, mm-hmm. I heard they're interesting, sad, interesting, but I want to do that too. Yeah, that was my biggest regret being in uh, southern Poland. Uh, I didn't. I lived maybe an hour from Krakow, and I still never made to Auschwitz. That was my regret. But yeah. if you can, you got to go to Croatia and Hungary. Croatia, uh, Croatia and Hungary. Spend a couple nights in Budapest and drive on down to Croatia and get to what you can. That's yeah. what we did. Uh, it's like a long weekend drove from Poland down to Croatia. Got to see the Plavitica Lakes, and it's cheap. Your, your dollar or your euro will go very far down there, and it's a lot of English. A lot of English is spoken, and mm-hmm. you'll see some of the most beautiful things you've ever seen in your life. So uh, we'll have to look into it. Yeah, it's I love Croatia. I, I, I could probably spend six months in Croatia, easy. Yeah. So, um, any obviously you have a little bit different path than what some what some imports just because you had the opportunity to experience the NFL game, and then go straight to GFL one. Um, for any future imports, do you have any recommendations on on what to look for, what not to do, anything of that nature? Um, I would say for a lot of the imports, just to be open to a change because it's not going to be anything like U.S. football, like the things you get um, in college, especially because I know a lot of D one guys they get so many. Th- but out here, it's about the love of the game. Like the Germans, they play it just for the love of the game. You know, they love football. So you don't get as many things, which I think a lot of imports, they just can't adapt to. Um, mm-hmm. But just being open to that and also just trying to um, really understand a culture as well. Because, yeah, you're coming from the U.S. It's a lot different. You can't expect the same exact things. Like, the biggest thing for me, I was like, dang, these refrigerators are so small. I was like, oh, man. But um, that was the biggest thing. Um, It's a different lifestyle, and they have to understand that you're going to have to adapt to some things. Yeah, that that, the first team I was with, I seen that little fridge. I'm like, what is this? Yes. But it's I can tell you I was so spoiled in Jeshu. When I got to Jeshu, I had a normal-sized refrigerator. A normal one? Oh, man. A normal one. And I had air conditioning. What? So you had a good, you had a really good. <laughs> oh, I had it so good. I yeah. if I, if any of my boys out there in Jeshu for watching this, I miss y'all. I love y'all, and y'all did spoil the hell out of me. <laughs> so, but uh, it's 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 crazy. Uh, you do have one fan here. Look at your screen. Oh yeah, cousin down there in Texas or Arkansas. They're in Arkansas. Oh, Arkansas. Yeah. Arkansas. Arkansas. We actually played Henderson State. I oh, did y'all um, really? Yeah, in the playoffs. <clears throat> Have you? Did y'all go down to Henderson State, or did you? Uh, they come to you. We went down. Did you see how Wichita Baptist right across the street? Yeah, right across the street. We uh, in Sioux Falls, uh, in Sioux, huh? In Sioux Falls, um, we actually our rival college is like right next to each other as well, which yeah. is pretty sweet. See, when we we went and played Henderson State in 2010, and at the time we were. Uh, five and three, you're just on the cusp of playoffs still. And uh, Henderson State was a top, was ranked, but across the across the road, North Alabama was playing at Wichita Baptist, and both of them were ranked. So you mm-hmm. got four outside Delta State and a couple of Georgia teams. You got the four main teams going at it, all within all playing at the same time, same within a hundred yards of each other. It's crazy. Yeah, that'd be nuts. Yeah, but uh. Man, is there anything, any shout-outs you got? Anybody you want to say hello to? Uh, either Colorado, Texas, Arkansas, or in Germany? Hey, I got to get a shout-out to the 212 defense. Um, Coach Jackson, you know, he got me to where I – I mean, defensively at least. Actually, also the goon squad back home and the European goon squad. That's our DB name. Yeah. So I got to give a shout-out to them. Uh, got to rep them this weekend. So, And mom, dad, of course, and sister. <laughs> We're not just seeing her. Who comes? And there's and, um, my mom. Yellow mother. <laughs> yeah, that's my mom. So, <laughs> what's up, moms? I'm glad you're watching, moms. Like, your boy, you got a good one. You did a good <laughs> job. So, we got oh, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us this morning or this afternoon in Europe. Uh, 
it was really good getting to know you, John. Thanks for the experience that you were able to discuss with us. And good luck this weekend, man. Good luck. Hey, this weekend. It's a big that. game. We're all watching. It's going to be fun. We're all going to enjoy it. All right. Sounds good. Hey, thank you for allowing me to be on here. Um, appreciate that. UN Podium. Hey, yep. Shout out to the Podium guys. Hope you hope, hope, thought I did a good job. Oh, I had to keep doing this. I'm having fun. Will yeah. Marcus. <laughs> Shout out to my South Dakota boys, too. Forgot them. I forgot Will's from, he's from out that way, so I was like, remind him, man. Yeah, you, yeah, you might want to play that up a little more next time. <laughs> well, John, you have a good one. And ladies and gentlemen, you have a great day. See you guys. Appreciate it.